In this third and final video on the, in the lesson about evaluating supply side policies, we're going to be evaluating by looking at the fiscal impact of supply side policies, because they all involve government spending of some sort, and also at the time lags. We tend to assume that there is a time lag, and it's often used as default evaluation in students' essays. But is that really always the case? Now, as with many of the videos on these online lessons, what we're going to start with is a reminder of some of the key terms which are relevant to this part of the topic. So I'm going to put up a list of six key terms here. I'd like you to see if you can remember a definitional description which for, for each of them. So please pause the video while you're doing that and writing them down and then restart when you're ready. And now what we're going to do is I'll just take you through each of them. So first of all, starting with the bu balance budget, this is the rare occurrence where government spending is exactly the same as tax revenue in a given time period. That phrase in a given time period is going to show up again here for the budget deficit, where government spending is greater than tax revenue in that given time period. And for the budget surplus, other way around, where government spending is actually less than tax revenue in a given time period. And if you've had a look at uh, budget data for the UK for the last 30 or 40 years, you'll know that that's a pretty rare occurrence. Now, the next two are much more sort of technical definitions. So the cyclical budget deficit is where government spending is greater than tax revenue, but as a direct result of a recession or a downturn in the economic cycle. So think about uh, a diagram of the government uh, sorry, a diagram of the economic cycle and how in a downturn government revenue and spending change uh, compared with what they're like in the upturn. And if you can't remember about anything about automatic stabilizers, please go back and revise them. Now, structural budget deficit is probably more serious because that's where government spending is greater than tax revenue persistently even during times of economic growth. And of course, normally in an upturn, when GDP is growing, we would expect a budget surplus as, as tax revenues grow. And then the final one, the national or public sector debt. Here we have the total amount owed by government. So it's the cumulative total, the sum of previous budget deficits, not just the figure for one year. OK, now that we've done those, we can go on and look at the next task. And here, we're looking at how expensive supply side policies are. What fiscal impact do they have? This is important because in your evaluate, if your evaluation is going to be linked directly to the supply side policy that you're considering in an essay question, then you need to make some distinction between different types of supply side policies. Very often students, as it suggests here, claim that they are or could be undesirable because they're expensive, they have a high opportunity cost, which may well be true, but it isn't equally true for all supply side policies. So let's run through some ideas where that may not be the case. So in each of these cases, we're going to be thinking about the costs. And the first one, well, the supply side policies could be to create a more free market. And of course, what you know about free, free market policies that that is that they actually reduce the amount of government activity. So in the long run, they may cost less than they do uh, than they currently do. Secondly, some supply side policies actually generate tax revenue. Again, this may be in the medium to long term, but that tax revenue extra income may actually outweigh the cost of introducing the policy. OK, the supply side policies may be to use PFI or private finance initiatives, which help to spread the costs. Now, if you haven't covered private finance PFI policies yet, have a look at our online microeconomics lesson about direct provision, because that covers that topic. What these do is enable government to spread the cost, for example, of building new infrastructure like hospitals over around 30 years instead of paying for it all up front. So again, that has a beneficial effect on government costs. Fourth one here is thinking about yields on government bonds. If yields on government bonds are very low, then the cost of servicing the borrowing needed to pay for a supply side policy may actually be quite low and not a particularly large burden for government to bear. So that, again, may be relatively insignificant but compared to the benefits of the policy. 
There may be other sources for paying for it. For example, FDI, foreign direct investment. Can you persuade overseas investors or encourage them to invest in the economy, for example, to build roads or other forms of infrastructure that would save the government having to find the money itself? And then the last one, this uh, relates particularly to developing economies. It may be that there is some provision available from the World Bank or uh, a non-governmental organisation, NGO, uh, which would enable those international agencies to assist with the cost of implementing supply side policies. So again, the burden on government is not so great. So when you're considering how expensive supply side policies are, don't just automatically default into assuming that they are too expensive for government to afford. Now, on this slide, we're going to challenge another way of evaluating supply side policies, again, to try and make it more effective, your evaluation more effective and more realistic. It is true that supply side policies usually take some time to set up and to implement, but not necessarily always a very long time. So the claim that supply side policies have a very long time lag and therefore may not be worth it may not always be an appropriate or effective way to evaluate the policy that you've been asked to consider in an essay. So we're going to look at a range of them now. Uh, I'm going to put up a list of eight supply side policies in a moment and your task is going to be to rank them in the probable in order of the probable length of time lag for each one. Here they are. So look through those eight, have a think about which ones will take least time and which will take most time to implement. You can pause the video while you're considering that and then restart it when you're ready. What you could do now is either compare your ranking with that of others in your class, if that's possible, or you could ask your teacher's opinion about your own personal ranking. But the important point here is that there is no absolute right or wrong answer. We don't know exactly how long each of them might take. But instead, that the time lag with supply side policies isn't always the same and that some could have a much faster effect than others. And this is one way in which you can give a much more realistic approach to your evaluation of supply side policies and start to develop a much more sophisticated approach to evaluation. And that brings us to the end of this third and final video part of the lesson on evaluating supply side policies.